All right, and we are live. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the show, Meet the Press with Love Joy. My name is Love Joy Mutongwiza. I am your host for this interactive show. Uh, and on the show, as we always say, the show is there to link the people and, uh, and the media, to link communities and the media. We are there to bridge the gap that is uh, always missing between communities and the media. Hence, we say we want you to meet the press. If you put whatever you want to talk about, please get in touch with us. We'll show, we'll sh we'll show you what we... Uh, all about how you can get to us and uh, you can be able to get in touch with us. Um, and as always, we start off with uh, the coronavirus uh, updates. We are in this pandemic together and uh, we want to collectively fight this. And as Joseph well Richard, we aim to make sure that we inform you about everything that is going on. Uh, we give you the, the daily statistics. We show you uh, how or where you can get your vaccines if you are willing to, to do so. So just a brief summary about um, uh, where we are in Zimbabwe right now. Uh, as of yesterday, 21 April, Zimbabwe has had 37,980 cases, confirmed cases, including 35,065 recoveries and 1,555 1, deaths. Uh, those numbers are not really good. Um, and to date, we have vaccinated a total of 295,631 we have been vaccinated against the COVID-19. Yesterday alone, we, we recorded 105 new cases and one death. And those numbers are not really uh, pleasing because we were sort of fighting this together and we were sort of winning the game. Uh, but uh, over the past few weeks, it seems like um, we are slowly losing it again. We don't want that to happen. With that, there, talks, there are talks about a third wave, which we do not want to escalate is what happened with the second wave. So hopefully you're playing your part, you're sanitizing, socially distancing, um, doing everything to make sure that the next person is safe, your relatives, your friends, and your colleagues are safe. Right, that said, um, in keeping up with uh, developmental work that we're trying to do at 26 Richard, today we're going to be talking about how development partners can engage local authorities uh, in accessing or improving service delivered for residents. Because at the end of the day, um, it's the residents that, that matter. They are the ones who are paying the bills. So they deserve better from the local authorities. So we have invited uh, a panel of, of, of panelists uh, to share with us. And um, we want to thank our partners at the DAN Church Aid uh, for sponsoring this program. Thank you so much. You might recall that um, on Tuesday, we had uh, the country director, Mars, here on the program. Uh, he was talking about the program, uh, the program that uh, his organization is doing in Zimbabwe. So we have, um, we, we are continuing that engagement with them. They are sponsoring this program, and we also have a representative from that same organization. But uh, thank you guys for coming to the show. Uh, I will let you introduce yourselves, Mr. Charles Mazorodze. Please introduce yourself where you're coming from. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, love to, good morning, everyone. My name is Charles Mazorodze. I am from World uh, Residence Forum. Residents Forum is a, is, a, is a resident association or a social movement that uh, works in the eight north of Gweru and beyond, and also uh, in trying to build, to bridge the gap between the public service providers, the local authorities, as well as the communities, and also as well as uh, the capacities of communities to engage uh, their service providers. Uh, to ensure that they actively participate um, in, in, in their in service in their localities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Mazorez. We will be trying to uh, get to you and find out more about you. Um, next up, we've got, um, my apologies for this, we have got, uh, all right, Godfrey Timba, please introduce yourself. Yeah, good morning. My name is Godfrey Timba. Uh, I work with the Mora Masung United Residents and Red Pairs Alliance. Uh, it is a, a resident representative body that seeks to uh, enhance citizen uh, participation in local governance. Uh, it also uh, uh, plays uh, play uh, several roles in, 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 in capacitating uh, both residents and local authorities on matters of uh, service delivery. We also do uh, awareness raising and advocacy in issues of uh, service delivery. That is, uh, we try by all means to ensure that uh, residents uh, get uh, quality social services uh, and also try to uh, uh, facilitate uh, interface and engagement between uh, service providers and, uh, and, 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 the, res and the residents. Uh, so in a nutshell, that is what uh, MURA is all about and what it, it does. 
All right, fine. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Godfrey um, Timber. We'll be coming back to you to find out more about what you're doing. You get Give us just a little bit about what you're doing, but we want an in-depth and how you're engaging. And then we've got uh, Siletemba Mate from the Dan Church 8. Uh, they're the sponsors of this program. So I can give me my boss. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. My name is Siletemba Mate. Um, I work with Dan Church 8 here in Harare. Um, Dan Church 8 is a funding organization. It's faith-based. Um, they is the headquartered mm -hmm. in Denmark. Um, no. So the work that we're doing here in Zimbabwe um, focuses on humanitarian work, uh, livelihoods, and governance. Those are the three pillars that we uh, cover in Zimbabwe. And this program falls under our governance work, where we uh, advocate for um, equitable distribution of resources, um, quality, uh, provision of quality services. Um, these are public services. Um, mm -hmm. as well as um, advocate um, for transparency from our local authorities. So in a nutshell, this is what we are doing in Zimbabwe. But to mm -hmm. you well, Thank you so much, Siletemba. And again, like, like everyone else, we'll be trying to come back to you to find out exactly uh, how you're um, engaging, especially in, 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 in respect of uh, local authorities. We are supposed to have another guest uh, unfortunately, the network is not on our side, but um, that side will continue with the program. Hopefully, they can join us as we go on with the program. Right, I'll come back to uh, Mr. Mazorodze. Um, please tell us more about uh, now. We are one in depth uh, of what you are doing, how you're engaging local authorities, and what are some of the impediments that you've uh, been uh, uh, experiencing in, in, in as far as engaging the local authorities is, 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 is concerned. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Love Joy. I think um, what, what we need to a little understand is that um, we, we, local authorities uh, are, are charged with the provision of public services to residents. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, residents are also expected to pay for the services that they are given by local authorities. So, as an organization, we are there to try and bring together and create platforms of engagement between the public service providers, including local authorities, as well as the residents. So we have created the several platforms uh, through financial assistance from um, our partners, uh, one of them, the Church Aid, where we, 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 we ensure that the residents uh, and, and public service providers, including uh, uh, councillors as well as council management, come together uh, to iron out differences in as far as service provision is concerned. I think you would agree with me that uh, service provision in most of the local authorities are not at their best. Uh, in residents, uh, generally, they have concerns around uh, the basic service delivery framework, including the provision of water, uh, refuse collection. Uh, currently, most local, even local authorities are facing the challenge of uh, uh, exorbitant uh, rates and bills that uh, residents are actually failing to, to, to pay. Uh, due to, to weakened economic capacities. We are coming out from the COVID-19 uh, and the, the residents are now also failing to, to cope up with the bills that have been uh, charged. So it's an outcry that is there. So our work now is anchored one on policy research where we actually analyze the various also policies that uh, are there in the council uh, and even outside the council, including our own constitution that was um, promulgated in 2013. As well as council bylaws, uh, the Evan Council Act, Chapter 2015, the amendments that are currently being done in line with the Constitution, which is the devolution, among others. So we raise awareness um, with the view of ensuring that we have a critical mass of informed citizens that can better engage their public service providers and also uh, uh, demand accountability. Uh, and transparency in how public finances are also are also are also being being, being 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 managed at local authority level. And why we normally concentrate on local authority is the, is the lowest level of government, which is supposed to respond uh, to the various services that uh, that that communities are, are facing. So we are trying to create an interface where citizens do have a platform uh, that they can also. Uh, uh, productively engage at their public service providers. And at the same time, on the part of the local authorities, uh, you would agree with me that um, uh, not all public officials 
to create policy makers uh, do you have the, 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 the capacity to actually inform policy? Because the public the official the public uh, uh, councillors are supposed to, 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 to craft policy that actually uh, shows this direction that we have in local communities. So we also do capacity development workshops uh, for councillors as well as managers uh, towards inclusive uh, service policy. Which is which allows citizens actually to actively participate in how service is actually provided at the local level. So these are some of the uh, things that we do um, as an organization. And on top of that, we also engage in institutional building, uh, where we through these community structures that we have, they do they have receive a lot of training, advocates out there, they are also do advocates on their own, as well as how they can actually analyze the budget. Because you'd find most times uh, citizens, the times they don't really participate uh, in, in the budget process, not because they don't want to participate, but because they don't have enough information or analysis on what the budget means and how it impacts their lives and how it impacts their day to day provision of public services. So, these are some of the uh, programs that we also do run uh, through assistance from development partners like uh, Dan Church Aid. Uh, which actually uh, helps in ensuring that we work towards an active citizen, which demands accountability, transparency, uh, and inclusion in the way, in the manner in which services are supposed to be provided at the local authority level. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it seems like we've got your hands full there, uh, Mr. Chosnes. Already, it seems like you are doing quite the most um, in your in, in your area there. And uh, I hope it's, it's the same thing that is also being done across board, across um, all, all the towns and cities in, in Zimbabwe. But uh, we can't go anywhere without talking to the Dan Church Aid um, themselves, because I think they form the basis of what we're trying to, to, to find out here. Maybe, uh, Siletemba, you can just tell us how you are helping out, how you are engaging or helping to engage, formulate that dialogue between uh, residents association and, 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 and local authorities. What is your role as the Dan Church Aid? Um, so as Dan Church Aid, we play mostly a coordination role, um, which is uh, strategic in terms of bringing together the residents associations, uh, as well as some technical partners with help um, in strengthening um, or bridging the gap between the residents' associations and the local authorities in some instances. So um, the way we do this is solely because Dan Church Aid um, is a human rights-based organization. So we maintain also the human rights-based approach um, in the identification of our partners. Um, and we know very well that the, RIAs, the residents' associations work mostly with citizens who are the uh, the rights holders in the communities. Then uh, we encourage also the dialogue between the residents, associations, citizens, and the duty bearers who are the local authorities and other service providers. So the role we play there is to connect um, the, the, the three pieces that are very crucial uh, in, uh, in terms of engaging um, for the betterment of the services that are provided and also we encourage um, mostly the use of dialogue um, around the issues to do with um, um, budgets and processes which tend to affect uh, how services are provided. So uh, we encourage residents associations to work with local communities, um, work with the citizens in terms of um, enhancing their capacities to understand uh, the roles that they can play in the budgetary processes and also encourage um, them to have a, a, a gender lens in the way uh, in which they engage with the citizens as well as with the local authorities. Because we appreciate that from where we sit, we have um, sort of a bird's eye view to see that uh, the way poor services affect citizens is different. The way it would affect a woman, um, the way the lack of water affects a woman is different from the way it affects a man. So without uh, adequate services, um, we realize that the, the, the effects actually that women suffer 
uh, in circumstances where services are not uh, provided in a gender responsive manner, um, women end up being drawn away from other productive um, roles that they can play. They are drawn away from participating in platforms where decisions are made because they have to then take the role of providing or uh, providing or finding other means of um, getting our resources such as water. So um, we also play a role of promoting our evidence-based advocacy, where we say um, in, in order for you to have solid advocacy and uh, engagements with the duty bearers, we need to generate evidence that we can use to show, to demonstrate that these are the gaps that we are identifying um, in the communities. These are the gaps that we are identifying in the manner in which um, the local authorities are running um, councils. So we have uh, conducted some researches to establish the state of service delivery across the um, uh, five major cities, which is Kweru, Mutare, Mashingo, Bulawayo, and Harare. We use that evidence together with the residents' associations to engage local authorities because when we gather the evidence, they also participate in the process. And we've conducted another uh, research as well to um, establish um, the financial difficulties that the local authorities are facing. And through these uh, researches, we also established that um, one of the strongest gaps that are there within the local authorities is how the billing systems and the revenue collection are methods, which is why you find that most local authorities have a huge uh, award, huge debt um, by citizens, by um, um, institutions, for example, um, and they they don't have like a proper uh, debt collection strategy or mechanism of following up on these debts. So we've used that evidence that we generated from the, from the researches to sort of empower the residents' associations when they go out to engage with the local authorities and also empower the citizens because this um, provision of services is a two-way process. It's a two-way process. The local authorities are expected to buy the service and the citizens are expected to pay for the services. So it's a process where we also say we're not encouraging citizens only to say pay or demand uh, 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 services, but we're also helping a culture of responsibility um, within citizens to say pay for the services that you are getting. Um, of course, we acknowledge that um, the context in which we are operating in right now is uh, very difficult economically. So there are those challenges where we acknowledge that citizens can be um, sort of in a weaker uh, financial position to pay for services, as well as local authorities may find themselves um, in a difficult position in terms of providing for the services because of the tight budgets under which they, they operate. So in a nutshell, this is the role that DCA plays um, uh, in coordinating uh, the residents' associations. Over mm -hmm. to you, Lam. Thank you so much, uh, Seletemba. Uh, you are doing the most. You are the ones that are on the backbone of this whole program. And uh, uh, I, I think the key issue that, I talked, that you talked about here is uh, accountability uh, and evidence-based advocates, which are very key issues especially in our uh, city councils where, you know, we've had reports of, um, uh, of corruption, uh, you know, mis mis misuse of funds. We've had a lot of that. And we would want to know why that is happening. Maybe enough is not being done by these organizations. And uh, you come in, you are, you're, you're, you're engaging uh, uh, the local authorities, you're engaging um, uh, the organizations themselves. And we hope that can go a long way. Now, uh, I'll come to Mr. Godfrey um, Timber uh, from Mura. Mm -hmm. Siletemba here talked about um, gender responsiveness, uh, the policies that are there. Do you think uh, in Mashingo, because uh, this is where you're coming from, do you think mm -hmm. the, the city council has, has got a policy that is um, um, uh, uh, gender responsive, that, that, that really advocates for women's uh, participation in, 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 um, in council issues? Yeah, in Masingo, they do have uh, that policy and they do have uh, a gender policy and a gender desk, uh, which is manned by a, a, a gender officer, who is uh, also a, a female, uh, who is a female uh, officer. Uh, 
uh, through the assistance of our uh, funding partners, uh, like you rightly said, uh, Dan Chachet, uh, Silas, the boss, they assist us uh, financially and uh, technically. They, they, sub they offer us support uh, on technical and financial basis. So we, we had a program that we, uh, you know, uh, engaged city council to to, 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 to come up with um, agenda policies and uh, also to roll out agenda um, to mainstream gender in their uh, in, the, in, the, in their work um, in, in providing service delivery. So they have uh, uh, they took it to our to, to our initiative to, to our uh, engagements and uh, in, in our calls. And they are, I think they are doing right because they are at least uh, they have gender lenses and uh, they do. Uh, mainstream uh, gender issues in their day-to-day -day operations, but that was after uh, we also uh, engaged them uh, on, on the issue through the support uh, of our, uh, our our funding partners. Uh, partner, I think mm -hmm. uh, in, in that uh, in that area they are doing well. But it was through our we, we also had our, our, our efforts, not uh, more efforts and our funding partners. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, it's, it, it, it's good to know that uh, at least in Mashingo, we are acknowledging uh, the role that women play because we cannot go anywhere. You know, as, as, as the UN, UN is saying, uh, we need in, in inclusion for, for, for everyone, the youth, women, you know, everybody. We are not leaving anyone behind if we are to attain um, our goals. Uh, we, we are trying to get in touch with Mr. Edson. Edson, are you, are you there? Edson? Okay, Edson is. Uh, seems we seem to. Be yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's muted, and uh, at the same time, his um, his network is really is really bad. So we'll continue with the program. Um, I'll come back to you, Mr. Charles Mazorote. What is the state of um of of affairs in your city? What is the state of affairs in your council? Do you, do you think residents deserve what they're getting right now? Do you think the council is doing enough to give uh, the, 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 the rate payers? Because they, they, they are the bosses. They are the ones who are paying their monies. Are they getting good sex delivery for the value that they are paying? Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Love Jim, for, for that important question. Uh, I think um, in terms of the service delivery problem that we're experiencing in Gweru, I think the state of affairs is very, very bad uh, in terms of um, how services <coughs> are being put to, to residents. Uh, firstly, if you look at the <coughs> service delivery framework, including uh, water provision, uh, generally uh, people are not are failing to access uh, potable water from, from, from their taps. Um, and uh, most of the times uh, it comes with the notices that actually shows that um, there are hiccups in terms of the interruptions in terms of how uh, potable water is being su supposed to, to to get to the residents and there's a challenge if you look at the refuse collection yes the local authority has been trying uh, by all means to ensure that um, uh, refuse is collected but now because of the breakdowns that they also experience um, the, the, the refuse not, is, is, co is not collected as much as uh, residents would want it to be and as, as much as not according to the schedule uh, that council had already proposed. Um, if you look at uh, the health facilities, yes, council also runs uh, primary health clinics, um, um, but they are not they are not they are not actually uh, providing the much needed service to the residents. Yes, you the residents go to the local clinics, uh, they, they they get a card. They pay their money for consultation, but there is no medication, which again is also a, a, a challenge. Uh, then I'll, I think, like what is, what Stile has already alluded to, uh, the current billing system that um, residents are actually having uh, is also a cause for concern uh, because residents are also not getting up to date uh, bills or statements after they've paid their, their money. Um, at the times, the money that they've paid. Is not reflecting on their on their, on their on their statement, which again becomes a challenge uh, in terms of how residents as well perceive uh, the manner in which council is is conducting its business. Then currently, there's a there's an outcry amongst residents on the 
current budget that was approved by the ministry responsible for local government, I think in most local authorities have witnessed um, that residents, uh, they, they, are, they are not happy in the manner in which the, the, the budgets have been approved, in the manner in which the rates regime has actually increased. Uh, some of the some of the some of the some of the the, the, the budget items have gone as far as over 146 percent from the previous budget again is the background of um of of, of covid 19 and lockdowns which most most citizens been affected uh and if you look at Gweru, for instance Gweru used to be an industrial city uh which relies on on industry but uh most of the industries have down, either downsized or totally closed, which means uh, people rely more on the informal economy. <laughs> but now, the series of lockdowns that we have had since last year, we realize a lot of uh, economic capacities of people have been weakened, and now the budgets are also being increased against uh, a weakened uh, capacity of the citizens to to be able to pay. And it's actually a challenge that uh, we are currently grappling with as, a, as, co as communities or as a city um that, that that is coming to to play and um uh you know yes in where we have even experienced uh recalls yeah. of, of 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 councillors to all the eight councillors are there um but at times in terms of decision making you find some of the decisions that are being that are being made uh might not might appear not to be in the best interest of, of the citizens uh there's at times they disconnect in what the citizens aspire to have and the key decisions that are that are that are made so this actually created a gap uh in engagement between again the local authority officials both councillors as well as council management and, and, and the citizens then in terms of the engendered approach to, to service to service provision uh this actually also poses a challenge yes the structures are there uh you, you go into council there's a gender focal person. Uh, each department has got also a gender focal person. But uh, beyond the having those structures, we have, we have a challenge of implementation of the various gender dimensions in the same framework. Because if you look at the basic safety framework, if you look at the water provision, maternal health, refuse collection, all these calls usually are performed by women, and they are mostly affected by a poor or an aid service delivery framework. So the, the gendered approach to service provision in practice uh, needs also to be increased so that at least uh, women's issues uh, are taken on board from the prioritizing and also the budgeting uh, process such that all their needs are addressed in the, in, 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 in the upcoming budgets it comes to them. So these are some of the issues I think that needs, uh, that, that we're experiencing uh, as, a, as a local authority, as a, as a city, in these communities people are just coming out from the from the lockdown the lockdown is still there uh, and uh, the uh, the economic capacities generally they have been weakened that is why even if you see some development partners that are coming in to provide cash transfers to the poor and the marginalized so at the same time we also expected council to be very responsive uh, in terms of how best can we address the strike a balance between the service delivery demands and also the capacities of the communities to pay uh, within uh, the, the service delivery framework. So this is this is this is the situation on the ground. It's not as best as service provide service provision is being provided, but it mostly at minimum level. Why the council offers also do not have money enough, enough adequate funding, but at the same time the residents are not in a, in a position again to pay for exorbitant rates that are that are being charged by council. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mazorodze, there with, uh, I, I think, a very frank um, analysis of, of the situation in Gweru. And, uh, you know, <laughs> when you talk about Gweru uh, being a, a former uh, industrial city, whenever I pass through Gweru, I always laugh with my friends that uh, it's, a, it's called the city of progress, but it, it has seen less progress in the past few 10 years or in, in the past few or i don't know 10, 10 15 years there hasn't been any progress in Beirut, and uh, it's it's quite an iso but we hope that uh, through um the, the the funding that you're getting uh you can engage more with the residents you can engage more uh with the local authorities so that at least the residents 
uh, get value for um, what they pay for. Because at the end of the day, they are the, they are the ones who deserve uh, a better life. Uh, you also talked about the issue of lockdowns, which I'll bring to Mr. Godfrey Timber. Mm. How much has, 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 has this lockdown affected service delivery in Mashingo? I was recently in Mashingo, I think last week, I was in Mashingo, and uh, just looking around in the CBD, it's not really looking nice. Um, how much of this lockdown or the COVID-19 in, in general, is, is, is it affected service provision um, uh, in your city? Yeah, uh, certainly uh, COVID-19 has adversely affected service delivery in Masingo. Uh, as you know, Masingo is not an industrial city, it is a, a sort of a retail city. Most uh, residents uh, survive on selling uh, where actually informal trade is now uh, the backbone of the, uh, the city economy. Uh, so uh, due to um, lockdown restrictions uh, and regulations, uh, a, in the informal trade was affected and people were, uh, you know, told to stay home. Uh, all their uh, trade activities uh, were stopped by uh, the regulations that were uh, put in place uh, by government. So it means, it meant that uh, residents could no longer afford uh, to to, to, to make uh, ends meet, they can no longer afford uh, to, to fend for their families, but their source of income uh, has been uh, affected. It, 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 so, in a way, they were also uh, now facing uh, challenges in paying their rates because they are no longer working. Uh, so, when they fail to pay their rates, it automatically affects the overhead of the city council. But the city council rely on uh, residents to, you know. Uh, for service provi uh, provision, they need. Uh, uh, we need to pay so that they can deliver. Uh, we have our, our our mantra: we pay, <coughs> we pay you to deliver. But if you fail to pay, then the city council can no, can no longer de can no longer de deliver. During the lockdown, the city council was having uh, you know challenges in uh, collecting refuse. We could go for two weeks, three weeks without. Uh, uh, our refugees are uh, being uh, collected, garbage e everywhere. We also, also because our residents were failing to pay their rates, city council was also facing challenges in, uh, you know, uh, 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 pumping water uh, to, 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 to residents, pumping and uh, and also, you know, uh, buying chemicals uh, to, to to clean the water. So uh, this is uh, it, uh, adverse uh, effects uh, to service delivery. And also, uh, the, uh, the city council uh, was also forced to, you know, to cut down on its uh, workforce because uh, uh, of the restrictions. So they did not; they were no longer operating at full throttle, and this also affected uh, service delivery. So um, the lockdown, um, as I said, uh, most interesting they uh, rely on informal trade. Most of them are, are vendors because we don't we, we don't have industries in Masingo. It's a retail industry. So when the informal trade, uh, the, the, the informal trade is uh, when it was uh, forced to to a halt by the um, lockdown restrictions or regulations, uh, it meant uh, it had uh, negative uh, impacts on uh, you know source of income of our residents who in turn are expected to pay uh, for service to the local authorities. So. But the local authorities in the residence were somehow crippled, they were somehow uh, 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 affected, and uh, this uh, uh, clearly affected our uh, operations and uh, our service delivery. So, in short, I think that's how uh, the lockdown affected us here in Masin. Mm. I think um, we, we all can agree uh, no one was spared by this uh, pandemic. Everything just, uh, you know, uh, when we step back, uh, every progress that, that had been made over the past few years uh, sort of uh, uh, went back. So we hope that uh, as, as, as the country is, is slowly coming out from, 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 from this COVID-19 pandemic, we will see better service delivery for, uh, for residents. Um, so let's I'll come back to you. Um, you are the, the, the funding partners, right? Um, and you are, you are hearing these stories from, from, from these guys. Um, I don't know. I, I I want to throw you into the into the pit here and 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 ask about. It's also a question that I will also throw to to the rest of the guys. But um, there have been a series of political recalls. Uh, I'm sure you 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 are alive to this. 
this has happened everywhere, I think. Uh, I know you're not a political organization, but in your line of work, you're also doing the same thing. You're also in, in, in encountering this. We have the guys talk for themselves, but I want to hear how much of that has that affected um, uh, your engagements with the residents' associations and the local authorities themselves? Um, so I, I think um, recalls have affected residents, the work of residents' associations a lot because um, what they are working on is not something that started last year. It's work that started this way back in 2016 and before that. Um, and they have invested a lot in terms of capacity building for the residents to build citizen agency. They've also invested a lot in building strategic partnerships and also capacity building um, local authority officials, councillors, and so forth. So what the locals have done um, is because these local officials who have been trained have been working to push the agenda of the project to identify with the residents and um, carry forward uh, the views that um, citizens want to be aired in councils. So the ripples have taken, taken away the conduit between the residents and the local community. So it has disturbed a lot that interaction and as well as the build up, the momentum that projects had built um, in terms of um, achieving the, the project um, objectives. So I think that is the major setback that the residents' associations have suffered as a result of these um, reports. The, the other issue is um, the councillors that have been called were legitimately elected by citizens to represent them in councils. So this is also taking away the right of the citizen who has chosen a leader whom they thought was fit enough to represent them. And suddenly they are not consulted if this person is pulled away um, from council to the, the, the role of representing them in council. So it's something that creates a citizen apathy and fatigue um, in terms of um, the, the urgency and the momentum that the project has <coughs> Um, around the engagement um, efforts that we have mm. over to you. Wow. That's, uh, that's quite strong. I'll, I'll let um, uh, Mr. Charles Mazoro um, there and uh, and, and Coach Mkunga, while we're still trying to get Edson from Tari, I don't know, his network keeps on uh, playing up. Uh, the, good, the bad thing is I'm also in Tari right now, and he is here, but we seem not to be connecting. I don't know what's going on. Edson, are you there now? Edson, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, we're still having challenges with him. I wish I, I was with him, but he's working so that we could be doing this uh, together. But, uh, well, we're in different locations, and you know our network can be getting very bad. But uh, I'll come back to you, Mr. Charles Mazorosin. We are talking about um, the effects that, uh, can I say, the political interference has had on, on service delivery. You are from, 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 from local authorities. How much is this political bickering affecting your work for the residents, and how much is that affecting your engagements uh, with the local councils? Mr. Mazoros, are you there? Mr. Mazoros, Okay, we seem to be having another challenge with Mr. Mazoro today. Maybe I'll also throw the same question to uh, God from Timber. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, you you, yes, I'm there. Uh, it, it, this political interference and, and the picking, it has affected uh, the operations of city council. Here in Mashingo, we have uh, four councillors who were recalled. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, the, 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 uh, there's a, uh, so many challenges that uh, this uh, these recalls have created. Uh, first of all, uh, in Masingo, uh, some uh, uh, council committees uh, are no longer uh, reaching a, a quorum because uh, of this. Uh, because some councillors have been recalled, so the council the, the, the council cannot. The, the, uh, from the time those councillors were recalled, they are no longer. You know, some committees are no longer sitting. 
and this is adversely affecting the operations of the council of the council when uh, for example the finance the finance committee uh, can't reach a quorum and cannot sit uh, when they should be you know holding a full council meeting they should hold committee meetings before a full council meeting then deliberate on issues of uh, finance but now they can no longer hold them because the uh, four councillors uh mr kurao Godfrey kurao uh, and others were, were recalled and uh, so to us uh it is uh, it is an injustice because we expect a council to operate at full at full throttle uh, also like what uh, Silete, uh, uh, alluded to uh just uh, a, a few seconds a few minutes ago uh, this has affected uh representative uh, representative democracy you know residents uh elected uh, their representative uh, in different uh, words and all of a sudden they, 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 they don't have those representatives they no longer have they no longer have anyone uh, to engage in their work you know uh, uh, when, when when they are facing uh, uh, service delivery challenges you know residents could run to their council and 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 and, 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 and express concerns over uh, several issues that affect them if they are facing water challenges if they are facing you know refuse collection challenges if their roads are bad they would go to their to, to, to their council and air out their grievances or so that those issues could be tackled in the full council meeting but now they, they no longer have those councillors they no longer have any way to go so it's affecting it's affecting them and and and, and this has also affected uh, 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 the provision of service delivery in their particular ward because no no one could go no one can go on, on their behalf to engage uh, some technocrats on uh, specific issues that need attention so uh, the recalls are, 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 are an injustice to the way service delivery uh, uh, is supposed to to, to, to be provided to, to, to residents. I think uh, uh, politicians should uh, be engaged and should be warned to stop these uh, articles. Uh, uh, <clears throat> actually, they should realize that uh, the people have the right to choose uh, their leaders. And if their leaders they are uh, legally chose are uh, just withdrawn uh, for no apparent reason, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's unfair to the residents. So, so I think in short, uh, all right. this is affecting us. All right, thank you so much. You aptly uh, put it there that uh, this is an injustice, and uh, for, for sure, if 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 I if I'm a, a, a resident in and my council is not there, I I, I definitely would feel the same. Um, Mr. Chosen was already there before you 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 decided to, to to run away from us. We were just asking you um, how is um, uh, the political situation, the political recalls that are happening, especially within uh, the opposing led uh, councils. How is that affecting? Uh, service delivery. How is it affecting citizens? Uh, Mr. Godfrey Timbahia was saying that this is an in injustice. He called it an injustice to citizens. What's your take on that? Mr. Mazorodze? Um. Mr. Mazorodze, are you there? Um. Mr. Mazores, are you there? Okay, we seem to be having a bit of challenge again with him there. Ah, yeah, okay. So we'll, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, the issue of devolution. We'll wait for Mr. Mazores to come back. Let's talk about the issue of, of devolution. Uh, Mr. Timber, and this, this one is for you. Yeah. Okay. So how much of, 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 of devolution progress has uh, Mashingo made? Do you think this is um, the right thing to be doing, especially in, in the context that uh, we have seen how much uh, interference comes from, from the top, from the Minister of Local Government? Of government. Do you think devolution is getting us somewhere? Uh, in my view, devolution uh, is, 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 is a hold. Nothing much has happened uh, in, 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 in as far as implementing devolution in Masumbo. Uh, is concerned you know the provincial councils uh, or councillors who were elected uh, by the people uh, in 2018 they have been sitting all along they have not been working and uh, what is only happening is that uh, the government uh, through the ministry of local governance is, 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 is dispersing funds to local authorities what they call devolution funds to, to local authorities and in turn 
uh, the, the, the city councils they use this man without even consulting as residents we we were uh, uh, we were made to learn or we learned that uh, during uh, our budget a uh, consultative meeting that the city council had, uh, received uh, about uh, 200 million devolution funds and they uh, decided to you to 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 you to ch to channel that money to the completion of uh, of a main sewer trunk but uh, we are saying devolution is uh, taking power to the people to the communities but when you give this the local authorities uh, this money the, 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 these, these funds and they make decisions on behalf of residents that is that is not the devolution that we want that is not the devolution that we expected we we, we think devolution is a cascading uh, decision making powers to the community the pe people should choose what they want to to you to to to, to do with those funds we we we, 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 we think we should uh, devolve develop and deliver so if if, if residents are not uh, 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 given the opportunity to, or if they are not consulted, or if, or if they are not participating in, in deciding uh, developmental issues that, that that they need at what level, then it's not the devolution that we want. We we feel that uh, residents feel that probably the city council was supposed to to do a uh, what based consultation to say we we have received two hundred million from central government. Which projects can we do for your ward? particular for the specific ones but they, they are not doing that they're just making decision in full council meeting without even consulting us so that is not the devolution that we want and we and 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 and, and uh, more so we we, we 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 are of the opinion that the uh, devolution is just uh, on paper but practically implementation is uh, is at hold it's stagnant mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's, that, um, that, that's our that's Okay, thank you so much, um, yes. Mr. Mazoro. Mr. Mazoro, you are back. Uh, we'll talk about the political uh, situation later on. But uh, I want to continue with uh, where Mr. Mtimba is saying uh, regards the issue of devolution. How much progress has been made in the city of progress with devolution funds? Uh, thank, thank you, I, I think in terms of uh, devolution, um, the, the constitutional provisions on how devolution is supposed to be done is in, in chapter 14 is very clear on uh, what 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 is supposed to be done what are the structures that are supposed to be there uh and uh, the key responsibilities of each and i each and every uh institutional framework that is there but taking stock of devolution is at the moment uh we realize that um uh there are a lot of gaps in terms of implementation of devolution um and also i think there is uh, there are different ways that, that people are understanding devolution uh, that the central government itself uh, local authorities uh, civil society organizations and even communities themselves they are differing understandings of what devolution is all about but now come back at council level you realize that i think uh, generally in most of the local authorities there's a general sort of a deliberate lack of understanding of what the details of devolution is all about devolution uh, um, uh, according to the constitution, it is very clear citizens must participate in decision making uh, at all at all level. Um, that is that is even the priority at this stage of what uh, our priorities as a city in terms of devolution. It means uh, citizens must also have a say in what the priorities are. I'll give you an example. What we are what we are experiencing now is not devolution of funds. These are tied grants that are coming uh, for specific purposes from the central government to come and do specific. <coughs> These are tied grants that uh, that that are not at times not speaking to the uh, immediate need of the citizens. Uh, there was a time I think when very very city council is saved. Um, funds to do street lighting but this is not the top priority of residents what residents want in there is clean and potable water they want the refuse collection to be collected they want an efficient building system um they want uh, a, 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 a an effective uh, primary okay but funds are currently uh, uh, tied for specific purposes that and also part of the, of the councillors as well in council management um there are still um there's still a big gap and a challenge insofar as understanding of devolution is all about 
what, what we are seeing is a situation where we are continuing um, with the way we are doing things before, uh, just sticking to what the Eben Council is going to say. If it's saying we need to do a uh, budget on the debt first and not having that citizen input, we are continuing that. But this, some of these clauses that are within the enabling legislation, particularly the Eben Council's Act, um, are not speaking to the issues related to devolution. And uh, still, local authority officials are continuing to use that. But what we would want to see uh, in the future, I think maybe through the realignment that is being that is being done now, is a, a deliberate attempt by both uh, levels of government, uh, the three tiers of government, the central government, uh, provincial government, and even local authority level, to ensure that citizen participation uh, is, 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 is a priority in allocating resources and also in allocating the various projects which devolution funds are supposed to do. So I think it's, it's both sides. At the local authority level, and even the central government level, where there's a deliberate, um, sort of a deliberate attempt not to understand what devolution is, is all about. It's about citizen mm. participation, it's about mm. equitable distribution of resources, it's about issues of financial transparency and accountability on the part of public officials on how they are spending resources that public funds that are generated at the local authority level. Uh, there are a lot of, I think there are a lot of reports that we've seen from the Auditor General's um, uh, office, which speaks to non-compliance and non-transparent um, issues that have been have been doing. You find most local authorities, like in Peru, for instance, they don't have up-to-date uh, audit uh, statements uh, for, 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 for maybe last year, 20, even 2019, they don't have them. But now, if anything that has happened before that, that, that period, you find it cannot be addressed in the coming 2021. So it's a challenge uh, that we're, we're also facing in terms of how local authorities are responding to issues related to devolution, how central government is also responding to the issues related to, to devolution, how public finance management is being married with the devolution to ensure that there is actual public participation in, 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 in financial mobilization, in the use of the finances, and also the accounting of the finances at the local level. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I think uh, if I'm not wrong, you're saying that someone is some is sabotaging someone, and uh, the rest ah. have to do for this. It's not it's not uh, like that. But I'm saying uh, the issues related to the intergovernmental relationships, the relationship between the central government uh, and the uh, provincial government, as well as the subnational, which is which are the local authorities. Yes, is yet a bearing in the manner in which devolution actually is being implemented and in the manner in which service provision at the local level is discharged. So mm -hmm. that relationship um, is created also problems uh, for communities and, and residents. Where it's not clear who is supposed to do what, where it's not clear who is supposed to, 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 to report to who. But the basis of devolution that we are dealing with here is based on what the constitution is saying. The constitution is very clear, citizens must participate in decision making uh, at, the, at, the, at the local authority level. Because okay. that's where uh, that's where responsiveness uh, is, is, is at the local level. All right, all right, interesting. Um, September, I'll come to you. I think I'll throw this one to you. Um, you can hear what these gentlemen are saying. They're saying that, um, uh, there's sort of a, a, a disconnect between uh, the central government and, and local authorities as well as uh, the residents themselves. So as the Dan Church aid, what role are you playing to ensure that um, there's rapport amongst these three interesting groups? Because someone is saying this, uh, residents will say that, and then the central government will tell you their, their side of the story. But there needs to be middle ground. And I believe that you, 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 you come in there. What role do you think you can play or you are currently playing? Uh, in ensuring that um, the issue of devolution uh, gets to be talked about at all levels. Uh, your your mic is is, is off. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. So I was saying, um, looking at the devolution uh, implementation, the way the piecemeal implementation of de devolution that we are witnessing. Um, the role that we have or we are playing 
currently, um, after analyzing or looking at the, uh, looking at how, where we are, rather, mm -hmm. we thought that there is a gap, um, which is the legal framework, um, and because there isn't there isn't legal framework really for the proper implementation of devolution, which is why we are seeing um, this piecemeal approach um, just to cover gaps here and there. Um, so the, at the moment we are working, uh, we've been interfacing with the interministerial task force team in the crafting of uh, some legislation that will mm -hmm. uh, operationalize uh, or pro operationalize the implementation of devolution. So I, I can't really speak much about that because it's something that is still in the pipeline. But I think the role that we can play is to facilitate that dialogue. And some residents association really have participated in the drafting process of um, some of these laws that I'm talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I can't go much into detail because it might <laughs> it might end ourselves in the food. Yeah. But I think <laughs> right. that we are engaging at that level. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. At least something is being done, uh, which is what we are in encouraging here. Uh, we want the rest at the end of the day to be the beneficiaries of uh, whatever conversations um, uh, uh, you guys are having. Um, there's a question that has come here, uh, or two two questions that, that, that have come uh, through. Um, the first one says, how many local clinics are there in each local areas represented in this discussion? Um, I understand this question, uh, or this question is for, for, for the both of you gentlemen. How many local clinics are there in each of your local areas represented in, in this discussion? Uh, are you privy to this information, Mr. Masorozi? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Lovejoy. I think um, for Guerrero City Council as a city, uh, it's plus or minus uh, nine uh, local clinics that are there. Um, we have uh, a, a, another hospital that uh, that council runs, uh, the, the, the Infectious Disease Hospital, the IDH unit, as well as, as, as about uh, three poly clinics that they are running. That is Mtapa, uh, Mtapa Clinic, uh, Senga, Mtapa Polyclinic, Senga Polyclinic, and Mkoba 13 Polyclinics. So mm -hmm. in total, and, those are the... Are they fully functional? Yes, they, 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 they are fully functional in terms of... Um, uh, they are open, yes, to the public. Uh, but at the same time, if you go there for medication, you realize that uh, you will not find the medicines. Uh, most of medicines you have to, to buy on your own despite mm -hmm. having paid the conservative fees. So in terms of stocking up of drugs, that's where the, also the challenge is. Um, uh, Kansas' uh, capacities to stock drugs have been seriously affected. They have uh, affected the why. I realize that uh, the rates that also uh, council charges in terms of the user fees, they are, they are restricted in terms of the maximum amount of money that they are supposed to, to charge. But at the same time, it's mm -hmm. a mandate that they are given by government, by central government, to perform at the local level. But the, these are unfunded mandates where you are given a responsibility without uh, the, as, the money attached to it so that you, you fully implement it. So uh, most youth facilities they will be using other, uh, um, uh, other um, uh, forts like the water account and other accounts which are not directly related to health facilities. So these are some of the challenges that also local authorities are facing in terms of being given unfunded mandates. They're given the healthy uh, function, family health function, but without the money associated uh, with that function to fully implement it. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Uh, it, it's good to know that uh, something is happening. Uh, well, I think this is the only progress that the city of progress has, has been making, and uh, we commend them for that. Um, Mr. Mtimba, from Mashingo's perspective, uh, how many local clinics are there in um, in your area? Do you think that they are fully functional? Uh, are they doing enough to to, to save this, uh, the whole population in Mashingo? Yeah, in Mashingo, we have uh, three clinics in uh, in ten wards. So our clinics are uh, 
uh, we we have few clinics. Uh, these are Rijeko Clinic, we have Mazoroze Clinic and Runyararo Clinic, but we have one in Runyararo West which is under construction. Well, so after completion, we'll, we will be having uh, four clinics. Uh, and from these clinics, only one is a maternity ward, which is uh, Mazoroze Clinic. Uh, so uh, uh, it, uh, the clinics are not. Uh, the clinics are not uh, providing service that we, we want because some uh, residents will stay in uh, in wards far away from Mazoroze Clinic uh, are facing challenges, especially women who are uh, pregnant when they when it's time to deliver. They face challenges of uh, accessing uh, maternity maternity clinics and um, uh, it, the Rijeko Clinic. Uh, it is the, the clinics are like uh, Mr. Mazoroze uh, from Guero said. Yeah, we are facing also, uh, you know, drug challenges or shortages of drugs. We just go there for consultation, and uh, they give you prescriptions to buy you no know, drugs from uh, from the pharmacies. They cannot provide uh, drugs at the clinic because uh, they, they are in short supply. Also, the Jego Clinic uh, is, is also is also offering uh, a COVID nineteen uh, isolation. It's now in a COVID nineteen isolation center where residents who are. Uh, uh, affected by uh, the pandemic, uh, isolated and get treatment from the center. So, in in in, in fighting COVID uh, uh, nineteen, uh, the clinic uh, in Ujiko is uh, come in hand, and then it is it has been doing well since last year. It is assisting uh, uh, government uh, at the Masungotina Hospital, the Central Hospital, uh, uh, with, with facilities. Uh, to, 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 to provide for those who are affected and it has been doing well in, in, in that regard but as of other you know uh diseases uh, uh treatment uh, drugs are the, 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 uh, access to drugs has been a, a major impediment there are uh, shortages of drugs otherwise uh, the clinics are, are also too, too too few considering that we are we have 10 big wards in Mashingwe we have we have three clinics. I think the, our city council here needs to do something about that. We need a clinic in each ward so that uh, residents can access health, uh, health uh, in a, on an equal basis. Okay. Um, uh, whilst you're still there, uh, Mr. Mtimba, you say that you yeah. have three clinics uh, in 10 wards. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as I know, Mashingo is a very big city. And I believe mm -hmm. these are very big wards. Um, mm. Have you tried to, to engage maybe um, uh, developmental partners like the Dan Church Aid, and or, or maybe um, uh, engaging the government to, to, to channel those um, devolution funds towards, or maybe the, the building of, of two or three more uh, clinics? Yeah, we have engaged the city council in the past, and, and I think I mentioned that we, we after you no. Know, uh, uh, complaining several complaining uh, complaints from residents uh, uh reached the city council that we need more clinics they started building another clinic in, in Mira West last last year but it's not enough we need uh, uh we will continue to engage them so that they can build uh more cl at, at least one clinic in each one so uh, we have not engaged our our, our our other partners funding partners uh to assist in building clinics like Denchej we've not uh uh, but I think, uh, but I would like to thank you for uh, bringing that idea. So we'll be engaging them very soon if they can assist us. So thank you for uh, that uh, brilliant idea. Yeah, but, uh, this we'll be engaging government. <laughs> <laughs> this one is for you. Uh, th th this is a plea. Um, I mean, uh, from 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 Mashingo City. You know, uh, as 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 an organization. Um, uh, you, you've been doing the most, uh, and we, we are seeing you, your work uh, uh, being witnessed in, in all provinces. And uh, this, in as far as as as, as, as um, okay, for all, um, do you think you are, you are, you've got a role to play? If so, how much can you chip in um, in these councils, or maybe your hands are tied somewhere? Okay, you're, you're, you're on mute. Okay. Yes. Our role is um, to advocate, right, with the Residents Association. Um, so what it means is that we have to work with uh, Mura in terms of um, 
prioritizing the issues of the residents and pushing them forward to the local authority. I'm not sure, I haven't mm -hmm. looked at the approved budget of Mashingo Council, but um, if the health is, because three clinics against the population of Mashingo, I've been there, I've seen that there is indeed a lot mm -hmm. of people. And yeah. I don't think three clinics are really adequate to service the primary health needs of the residents. So I would expect to see that at least maybe Mura, if they started engaging on this area, um, to have the health sitting as a priority in the budget for the local authority. If that is not the case, then I would say going forward, we start um, pushing really to have health coming up as the highest priority for the residents of Mashiro and making sure that when the next budget cycle comes or when there is an opportunity for reviewing the annual plan of the local authority, you push that to the top of the priority list so that that clinic, which is still under construction, is completed and we push for the construction of any more um, decentralizing the services to other uh, words that are not um, covered. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, a two, three, three, we understand that it's not your prerogative, but uh, when the children come to you pleading, I think uh, you might have to <laughs> loosen up your pockets and, uh, and, and, and find something. But uh, that said, we are about to wrap up our program, but we can't go without talking about uh, the vaccination program, the COVID-19 programs in Mashingo. Timba, and then uh, I'll come to you, Mr. Mazorodze. Um, how is the vaccination program uh, going? Are residents aware um, of, 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 of vaccination centers? Are they provided for? Is there enough information on what is supposed to be done, where they're supposed to go? Yeah, yeah come come All right, it's okay, Mr. Mazorodze, you can go, it's fine. Uh, I didn't hear your, your, your question. Uh, you, you, you. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm asking in respect of um, uh, the vaccination program that is currently underway. I'm, I'm sure you are alive to the fact that um, uh, Zimbabwe is currently a, a, um, on your vaccination against COVID program uh, and are aware uh, of, of the centers where they're supposed to be going. Are there any uh, provisions that you think need to be to be in place for them to, 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 to have the knowledge about um, the vaccination program? Uh, uh, is information that is out there enough for them to instill confidence to go and get vaccinated? And are the centers even adequate enough uh, to, um, to, to to provide that that for for the residents? Yeah, th thank you very much, Love Joy. I think um, in terms of the, the current vaccination program uh, that is being that has been rolled out by by the central government in the various provinces. I think in Guero there are various centers. That you can go and um, um, uh, if, if you're so vaccinated and given a job. Um, but I think also at the same time, the local authority has been doing, the local authority, public relations department, as well as the Department of Health, have been doing some awareness uh, easy, uh, to encourage people to go and be being vaccinated at the various centers that are there. And there are various clinics, I think, that have been designated to be vaccination centers um and, 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 and people some of the people they are going there uh but you know uh there's there's been some 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 misconceptions about the, the vaccine amongst communities and some some people uh, are still skeptical on, on the fact that they can uh, they, they can encounter as a result of the vaccination so i think they also need to continue uh, raising awareness on vaccination, um, uh, on vaccination that that is being done by the central government to ensure that at least maybe the majority of the people are vaccinated. But you know, mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of talk around vaccination, a lot of myths and and, and, and and talk around vaccination, uh, which has actually affected the way people one perceive the vaccination, and also has also affected the uptake of the vaccination itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it's good to know that something is happening uh, in 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 Guero there, uh, Mr. Matimba. Um, Timba. Yeah, in Masingo, you know, the vaccination centers are not adequate. We only have one vaccination center, which is uh, at Masingo General Hospital. Uh, the three S Masingo City Council clinics are not uh, offering uh, 
vaccination centers and we have uh, engaged the city council to do something to assist the Ministry of Health with those uh, uh, clinics and centers so that uh, residents can uh, <coughs> can easily uh, uh, walk to, 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 to their local clinics and uh, get vaccinated. Uh, but that is not happening uh, as yet. So people, residents are facing uh, challenges in getting um, transport money to go to town and then get another lift from town to general hospital to get vaccinated. So this is discouraging residents to go and get, uh, you know, uh, those uh, due to financial uh, uh, financial challenges, they cannot afford uh, transport money to go to uh, to, 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 to Moscow General Hospital. Also the issue of uh, our, our awareness, the awareness has not been enough, it's not been adequate. You know, city councils actually, the city council actually is not doing anything in, 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 in raising awareness to its residents to get vaccinated. It is central government that is doing that uh, through the Ministry of, uh, of, 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 of Health. But uh, we, we, feel, we feel when we, we think city council should also chip in and, uh, and also do the, this awareness because we cannot leave everything to, 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 to the Ministry of Health. City council should see to it that their residents are vaccinated so that the spread of uh, of the disease is a uh, combat is, 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 is mitigated when people are vaccinated so we call for for, for the guards we are still engaging them to provide uh, vaccination centers uh, like other cities are doing as misty in masoro things where it's allotted to we understand in our area there are several vaccination centers uh from uh council uh, facilities here yeah, it's not happening and uh, we, we don't know why city council is lacking or uh, is taking time to assist uh, the government in with, with such facilities mm -hmm. uh, i hope uh, one or two people from from Mashingo, uh local authorities are listening and if they're not to we'll give them this program so that they can hear what you are saying what you're clamoring for uh and what you wish is uh, Finally, uh, we want to close off this program, and uh, as always, we want to find a solution to this. I know it might not be practical right now, but we want to find solutions. The, 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 issues, that, that, the issues that that came out from here, uh, social, economic, and uh, political issues, I'll start with the uh, development of a partner. What solutions do you think um, uh, should, should be adopted uh, by local authorities to provide adequate service delivery to residents. Sletemba, are you there? Yes, and unfortunately I lost you a bit there. All right. Um, I'm, I'm saying that we, 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 are, we are wrapping up, right? And we need solutions. We can't go without finding solutions. We can't go without talking about solutions. And I'm, and, and I'm asking, um, what do you think uh, are the solutions to the problems that have been raised here? Uh, how can, uh, yes, you're doing what you're doing, but you've done more or on a larger scale to, to, to bring these parties together uh, and, and provide better service delivery for residents uh, in various cities. Okay, um, I would say um, the first key thing that we need to do is to continue um, the engagements with the residents because I am seeing a situation where there is a lot of fatigue coming from the economic pressures, coming from um, betrayed promises and all. So I think the engagement is very important to keep um, that citizen agency that we'd already built um, still going. Um, then um, we also need to be very strategic and creative um, with the manner in which we uh, package our programs to just keep the interest amongst the residents as well as um, within the local authorities. Because there's the, the environment that we operate in is very um, volatile. It keeps changing very fast. And there is need for creativity, really, in terms of engaging with the local authorities, identifying also um, the law hanging. There we think um, we can work with the local authority to improve their services um, um, by doing those small things that don't need a lot of resources. There is, of course, an excuse that we, we often see that there is hiding behind small budgets and so forth. But I think from experience, what we have learned is that um, we have a demand-driven uh, service uh, provision um, from all the local authorities. 
all, all the local authorities. So where there is not demand really that is coming from the citizens, the local authorities tend to slack. So I think there is that need to keep them on their toes by also helping them to identify those low-hanging fruits really that they can implement without much resources. Um, and then um, the last thing that I would recommend as a solution is um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to um, uh, also work around um, local authority um, policies. There are a lot of bylaws that are very old that our local authorities are still using. So those are some of the things that hinder the progress around implementation of uh, um, uh, progressive um, efforts around services. So if there could be really some interest in um, uh, reforming a local authority policy at that lower level um, to repeal the old ones that are from way back before, the, before we had independence and align them to the current um, provisions of the constitution, I think we could have um, a positive change um, from the local authorities side. Over to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Selectember, for that, and we appreciate you coming to the program. Uh, Mr. Masoro, in, in short, very short, because we're out of time, um, what are the solutions that you would maybe um, uh, throw, be it to the local authorities, be it uh, to the um, local government and, and development of partners, uh, for you guys to work properly uh, or to, 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 to increase your work um, to the residents? Um. Thank you very much, Love. Uh, I think there are various, uh, so the, like what the chamber has already said, uh, some of the various solutions uh, she has already alluded to. Uh, I think also there is need for, uh, again, serious commitment uh, between central government, serious commitment and improvement of relations between the central government uh, and also the local authorities themselves, so that we come up, they come up with a workable. Um, arrangement where local authorities uh, 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 are also given finances from the central government to do the mandates mm -hmm. like related to health uh, that local authorities are, are also failing to cope with. Then at the same time, I think local authorities also sh should do um, uh, in engagement again with the residents, resident association, and other civil society actors to ensure that there is inclusive. Um, uh, service provision, which it, it involves everyone uh, from the prioritization, uh, even the, 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 the monitoring and evaluation of the various uh, service delivery programs that the local authorities are supposed to do. Then I think also the development partner, the um, providing uh, platforms for productive engagement between uh, public service providers local authority officials, uh, uh, residents, uh, associations, as well as the residents can show us that they reach a common ground uh, uh, in the direction in which uh, local service is supposed to take. I think that common understanding amongst the various stakeholders can also uh, play a very critical role uh, in the way services are uh, provided. Um, then, uh, I think the other uh, uh, thing that we are facing is that uh, the, we need a, almost sort of a complete reconfiguring of the local government sector, where at every stage of the decision making process, I think citizens must have a say in the government that governs how they are supposed to, to, to look like. I think that is a very critical uh, indicative. Uh, that um, uh, local authorities should ensure that in their government systems there is a provision for ensuring citizen, effective citizen participation in order to 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 to, to, to realize uh, progressive results insofar as uh, services are provided. Because for any service delivery uh, framework to, okay. to be effective, citizens must partic must participate and must pay for the services. So that engagement allows uh, a common understanding, uh, a common direction in so far as the service provisions. So I think this is some of the solutions that uh, uh, needs to be done. I will also thank the 
development partners like the Anche Shade, who has been doing a uh, telling work insofar as providing uh, financial assistance for providing these platforms and also for, for, for creating robust advocacy amongst organizations to ensure that citizen participation is done and also uh, a inclusive service provision would be realized. All right. Thank you so much, Madam Mr. Mazorodze, and we appreciate you coming to the program and uh, sharing with us the kind of work that you're doing and uh, the kind of way the help that you're receiving from uh, the Dine Church Aid. Uh, lastly, Mr. Mtimba, uh, in a nutshell, again, we want to find out from you what solutions would you propose um, going forward for, for the residents, for the uh, local communities, for the local authorities, uh, the government and uh, development of partners? Yeah, okay, yeah, since I'm, I'll be the last person, I, I think I'll not uh, take much of your time. Uh, for okay. local authorities and government, uh, much has been said by Mr. Mazoro and Sili. So I have, I have only one solution that I would like to put uh, on the table, and this is to our development partners. I think uh, we, uh, we, I request, I can request them probably to uh, facilitate a, a platform where a political parties, uh, residents, associations, and local authorities can meet and dialogue over the implications of uh, uh, recourse in, in city councils. I think we need to discuss about this with the political parties who are bickering, the ones that are, are behind this, who are bickering, who are finding, who are now making uh, their, their, their a better ground uh, uh, in our local councils, you know, and, and then we're affected. So we want this to come to an end, but this can be done through a dialogue that can be facilitated by our our funding partner, Danish Station, probably a, a, a very big uh, conference for that. And we will I will now discuss issues with the political funds, with the political actors and other stakeholders. I think we, if they do that, uh, they will help. Uh, this will assist a lot. Uh, since they've been doing a telling job in other sectors they should continue to do this through facilitating that uh, conference or, or a meeting i think it will be that's, what, that's all I, I, yeah. <laughs> the, good, the good thing is uh is uh, uh, uh september is here and then and, and she's hearing what she's saying i'm sure she's uh, yeah. noting it down i'm sure they will have to discuss this uh, <laughs> at the offices and then maybe uh, get to you guys and we, we honestly hope that um this sort of meeting uh mutualist because we've seen this happening you know we've seen a lot of um uh, councillors being recalled and like you guys are we were actually saying it is impacting negatively um on, on residents uh, yes the political fights they can be in the offices but it's the residents that suffer at the end of the day so this is to you Simba. i hope you are you're taking note uh the guys are crying for your help and uh this is where you come in this is your aid now this is they need your aid <laughs> yeah, and 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 two six three will cover the conference live on the, <laughs> the live coverage from two six three. Yeah. <laughs> you put all the logistics in place when we are very yeah, happy to yeah. facilitate that coming. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, and Celestine. Uh, September for coming through to the program. Unfortunately, we could not get um, Edson from Mutare to also share his experiences here. I hope I can be able to meet him at his offices before I leave here so that at least we can uh, put it out there. But uh, that said, thank you so much to Dan Church 8 for facilitating this conversation. It's a conversation that we hope will continue to, to, to you know, to, to go on. Uh, we want to serialize this and then uh, we can bring um, uh, more city councils uh, to talk about their programs because there, there was a comment from but I should Sam Zamiri, and he says, when are you planning to a uh, slot for City of Harare? We feel that there are a lot of core governance issues that require serious inspection. Again, so this is to Dan Church 8. You might need, you might need to facilitate this uh, for us so that we can also cover uh, Harare issues and, uh, um, and Blauer issues. So that's it. Thank you so much for coming to the program. And to our viewers, thank you so much for watching uh, through the program. Uh, we hope and pray that you continue to exercise caution as we fight this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, uh, keep your brother safe, keep your families uh, uh, safe, keep your colleagues safe. Make sure that you are social distancing, you're sanitizing, you're wearing your properly, and uh, together we'll fight and win this battle. That said, my name is Love Jim Tungiza. The program was Meet the Press with, uh, with Love Joy. Join me in other programs to follow. Thank you.